Throughout history, the stress and devastation caused by pandemics have given way to inspiration and enlightenment. More than 700 years ago, an outbreak of the bubonic plague, also known as the Black Death, led to advancements in sanitation, cleaner water, cleaner streets, safer food preparation. It was followed by the Renaissance, a period of intense intellectual and architectural growth. Just 100 years ago, the 1918 flu pandemic sparked advancements in our efforts to develop an early warning system for new illnesses and to coordinate disease response on an international scale. It was followed by the Roaring Twenties, the decade that featured incredible advancements in medicine, entertainment, and electronics. As we mark the two-year anniversary of our COVID-19 experience at the Johns Hopkins Hospital, we take comfort in knowing that amid the stress and upheaval in our personal and professional lives, our JHH team came up with new ways of working, new ways of providing care, and new ways of connecting that made us better and helped us grow. We are bringing the best of what we have lived and learned these past two years into the future of the Johns Hopkins Hospital. So what does that look like? There are examples in every corner of JHH. I'll start with two that are based in technology. They existed before COVID, but didn't take root until the pandemic forced us to change how we interacted with each other and with our patients. First, Zoom huddles. These grew out of the need to problem solve and make decisions quickly as our COVID numbers increased. With experts from across the hospital in the Zoom room, the meetings often became forums where we could share good news, great ideas, and advice for working through challenges. As we emerge from COVID, our huddles may be less frequent or look a bit different, but they will remain an important part of our communication with each other. Then there's telemedicine. Before COVID, we were in the process of building out a program. As the pandemic began to take hold, virtual visits became critical to ensuring that our patients remained connected with their care. Both our patients and providers loved the access and convenience it provided. It is also here to stay. I do think telemedicine has allowed for us to have better communication. I think it's allowed for better care. And I think it's allowed for a better quality of care and what, what families perceive as a better value of care. The biggest dynamic that we saw change was the way that we cared for patients preoperatively. So when a child has to have an operation, it is the biggest event in these parents' lives. But it's also the biggest event in their siblings' lives, their uncles' lives, their grandparents' lives. And so being able to, to counsel all of the family at the same time and hear the same message by the same provider preoperatively was extraordinarily valuable from an education standpoint. Technology is just the tip of the proverbial iceberg. The pandemic also spurred us to think about better ways to care for patients on our campus. I'm thinking of innovations such as curbside care at the Sydney Kimmel Cancer Center, as well as a new program that helps care teams learn more about their patients as people. So we decided to set up a curbside oncology cancer clinic so that we could provide all of those services from their car or from their vehicle and not have them have to pay for parking or come into the building uh, and then they could just drive off after their appointment and go back to their homes. They're getting chemotherapy at the curb, that's usually an injection. It's reduced the time um, from probably a good hour or more in many cases down to 15 minutes or so. We have had uh, an incredible response to this. It's just been so successful that it, you, you wouldn't even imagine moving it back to the old way of providing care for these patients because it's just very efficient and good for them. The pandemic made it difficult, at times, to find the physical space to care for patients with non-COVID illnesses. So our facilities team built a whole new unit Halstead 3 Osler 3 in a matter of weeks. It will remain open going forward to enhance our capacity to provide inpatient care. I came from a unit that I loved and what ultimately made me to stay on H303 is that we are such a family. I love the leadership team here so much. They've helped me grow as a nurse, as a leader, and every single nurse on staff has just made this a family environment, um, a great team, and somewhere I plan to stay for a while. And last, but certainly not least, were changes that made things easier and more joyful for staff. Modifications to our cafeteria grew out of the need to limit movement and personal contact 
but resulted in more convenience. At the beginning of the pandemic, as all of us, we were facing the challenges of trying to figure out how do we provide the best food, the best service in a pandemic environment. We changed some of our venues from what had previously been self-service, where a customer or patron could come, they could serve themselves. And we then made it where we would serve them. So it added another degree of hospitality, it added another degree of service, but it also added another degree of safety. Wellness snack carts were a way to offer a pick-me-up during those difficult times, and we all need a pick-me-up now and then. People were so excited. Uh, they did ask us how much the items cost, and we would say, no, this is free. It's a, it's a gift for you, and it just made their day. It felt like we were handing out gold, um, but in fact, it might have just been a, a small pack of something and a drink, and uh, they loved it. It went so well here at Johns Hopkins Hospital. They actually made it a health system initiative, so all of our affiliate sites have um, what's called now the wellness cart, and uh, so everybody uh, across the system is on the receiving end of this really great initiative. These are just a few of the many new ideas, new programs, and new ways of caring that we will carry with us even after the COVID-19 pandemic is firmly in the rearview mirror. They are your ideas at work. They made us more accessible, more convenient, more responsive, and even better than we were. I am so proud to be a part of this JHH family. We didn't just make it through the past two years. We learned new things. We came up with new ideas and we helped each other grow. I'm looking forward to our future here at the Johns Hopkins Hospital. Just like the pandemics of the past, I am certain COVID will be followed by our own version of the Renaissance and the Roaring Twenties with inspiration and enlightenment in the years to come.